If you're visiting Singapore as a tourist, you might be wondering how to take the train. After all, trains are an affordable and convenient way to get around the city. If you're not familiar with the train system, it can feel a bit intimidating. There are lines that crisscross the city and sometimes it isn't clear which direction you should be traveling in. But don't worry, it's actually really easy to catch the train in Singapore and I put together this step-by-step -step guide to help you navigate the train system like a pro. So step number one is to get a ticket. Visa and MasterCard are the most common tickets used in Singapore and even foreign ones will work. Now I generally prefer a credit card when I travel but that's a story for another day. An alternative is to use a prepaid easy link card. These can be purchased from MRT stations and cost $10 with $5 credit. Now that's enough for three to four single trip on a train or a bus in Singapore. I'll go further into detail on how fares are calculated later in this video so stick around for that. You can also buy an easy link card from stores like 7-Eleven or Cheers but they charge a bit more and the $15 tourist sim card from Singtel includes an easy link card with $3 credit. Now that's enough for just one or two trips. I still prefer using my credit card though, even a foreign one because the foreign exchange fees on the credit card are going to be less than the five or seven dollars that I've lost purchasing a new EasyLink card. Single trip tickets used to be available but they've been phased out. I really recommend you use a credit card or EasyLink card instead. So step number two is to plan your routes. Maps can be found at every MRT station that show you the whole network. I've put one on the screen here to give you an idea of how many stations there are in Singapore. Now most tourists don't need to worry about all the stations on the map here. You're probably only going to be traveling around the same inner core of train stations. Those within the circle line, for example. The maps that are found at MRT stations are great at telling you how many stations are between you and your destination and which stations are used for changing to another line. They're not great at telling you the distance between stations though, or, or how close two stations are to each other. You might find that what looks walkable on the MRT station map actually isn't when you get to the surface. Google Maps is a good alternative and I'll cover that in a minute, but large directional signs are also available in MRT stations to show you the location of nearby attractions and landmarks. So as you're coming out of an MRT station, you can look for the large maps or large directional signs that will show you where the landmarks are. Every station also has this locality map that shows you which exit to take for certain streets in the area and that has the landmarks marked as well. But if you're feeling lost, ask any of the staff at the train station for help. I found even the security guards are willing to help you out if you're not sure about anything. Google Maps is the most convenient that I've found for figuring out which trains to catch to get you near your destination. It has a train only option in case you don't want to catch the bus. Though stick around to the end of this video and I'll give you more detail on how you can escape the heat and humidity using Singapore's excellent bus network. But watch out for Google Maps though as I found it doesn't always have the right interchange times or train station exit locations, which means that sometimes it's not giving you exact directions when you get off the train or which train lines to change to. It's also a little bit out of date with some of the new lines. Uh, Singapore constantly opens up new MRT lines and Google Maps sometimes can't keep up with those. Even when using Google Maps, I like to use the locality map at the train station as I'm getting off the train to help figure out where I'm going to go. There's no published train timetable for services in Singapore, all lines are designed to be turn up and go. That means that you can turn up at the train station and not wait more than two to five minutes for a train to arrive, even if you've just missed one. Late at night, you might have to wait a little bit longer for a train, but that shouldn't be more than five or seven minutes, and that's even far out on some of the outer lines. There is also a little trick to the circle line where you need to interchange at Promenade Station if you're going to certain areas around Marina Bay or the CBD. So do pay attention carefully to which train you're catching if you're using that Dobie Gort or or Marina Bay part of the circle line. Step number three is to get on the train. Tap your card as you enter the station. The fare will be calculated at the end of your journey and this includes any interchange that you've done, even if you've had to tap out of a station, tap in again as part of an interchange. Make sure that you catch the right line. The colors are really helpful, but often one station will have multiple train lines, so make sure you're following the signs for the train line that you need to catch. Also make sure you're finding the right platform. Check the direction that the train is traveling in. Sometimes platforms can be across from each other, sometimes they can be on on different levels, even for the same train line. Be careful with the downtown line, the blue one, because there is a little quirk in the direction the train's traveling in. You can check a map at the platform to make sure you're traveling in the right direction though. Some platforms can be a long walk from the entrance of the station, but at least all the walks are air conditioned. They're often underground as well. Nearly all trains in Singapore are fully automatic and driverless. Now this means that they won't wait around if you're taking a bit longer to board. Sometimes in peak, there's an attendant to make sure 
everyone's safe, but often the trains are fully automatic without anyone watching them. So make sure that you're ready to board the train when the doors open and that you're not sticking around or holding the doors open for too long because the train will try to close them and leave at a fixed time. Uh, step number four is to alight at your destination. Announcements on the train will help you figure out what the next station is. There are also signs on the platform. When it's your station, make sure that you're ready to get off the train because the train is automatic and the doors are automatic. And Singapore trains stop at every station, so there's no need to press a button for the train to stop or to call an attendant. Step off the train once the doors have opened and make sure everything's clear in time and find your exit. Uh, signs help, but I found that you often need to catch the escalator up one level to find a helpful sign that will show you which way to exit, but also try that locality map if you're not sure. You can always ask one of the security guards or station attendants, they'll be more than happy to help. Tap out again as you leave the station and your fare will be charged based on how far you've traveled. If you're using a credit card as a ticket, unfortunately it won't tell you the actual fare that's been charged, but it won't be more than a couple of dollars. So how much does it cost to catch the train in Singapore? The minimum trip is just under $1. This will only cover one to two stations though, so typically you'll look at paying between $1.10 and $2 depending on how far you travel. The maximum fare for a single journey is $2.26. So that means that even if you catch the train from one end of the island to the other, you're not looking at paying more than $2.26 for that single journey. There is no daily cap though on the train cost and there's no daily pass for the train. So that means that if you're catching the train a lot in a single day, those fares, even though each trip is small, can add up. Catching a bus is also a great way to escape the heat in Singapore. The service is frequent, so you're never waiting around long. And the network has excellent coverage of the city. So watch this video next to find out more about catching the bus in Singapore.